Holly fam well welcome back to another episode we're back uh, in the surf today and uh, my name is rich by the way if you're new to the channel and uh, if you haven't subscribed yet please subscribe it really means the world to me and we've got some beautiful conditions to fish the surf today lots of turbulent white water out there it's the start of the incoming tide and on top of those conditions we've got great like overcast foggy whiteout conditions and I love days like this in the spring and we get a lot of them because of the temperature of the water temperature of the air and then also maybe the dew point I think has something to do with it and uh, because of this you can come out here as long as the tide is good and uh, fish in the middle of the day so you can sleep in not fish first light or you know not fish uh, last light and you know be on time for dinner but uh, like right now it's 12 p.m. and we're out here and we're fishing the incoming tide and I you know I'm anticipating that uh, we should be able to get on some kind of decent action just in the middle of the day right now. So we're gonna head down about a quarter mile to our first spot, start plugging away, then I think a half mile to the next spot, uh, and then maybe a mile to uh, our final spot that hopefully will uh, produce some fish, and <laughs> if not, maybe then, you know, at least we'll uh, just be getting a workout in, so we're staying in shape. And also, before I forget, huge thanks to Ridge for sponsoring today's video and I'll put more information down below in the description if you wanna check them out. And I partnered back up with them because uh, they have great little gadgets and as well as their flagship product, the Ridge Wallet, which uh, is just an awesome way to carry a few of the cards you need, a little bit of cash that you need, and none of the junky stuff that you have in a bulky wallet. So uh, again, if you wanna save some money, get your pops a great gift or a loved one, or uh, you know, just anybody a great gift uh, and save some money, I'll put the information down in the description. And in a couple videos from now, they're sending me a brand new one, so I'm gonna be doing a giveaway for a free Ridge wallet through the channel. So again, hit that subscribe button so you can stay tuned and know when I upload that video. made it out here this rock is a little tricky to get onto so you have to use two hands to push yourself up and we've got this tsunami talking popper on right now but we're gonna pop this off and uh, I think we'll throw on a a17 diamond jig oh that's a27 it's crucial you use the right weight otherwise we'll be dragging bottom and getting weeds instead of swimming it in the water column and getting bites. And we're starting with a diamond jig because in the spring, the main forage is typically sand eels, which a diamond jig imitates. But uh, we'll take like 30, 40 casts with this, see if we get any bites. And if not, maybe try a shad or maybe try a bucktail. And uh, we'll see which uh, catches first. And uh, the setup we're using today, before I forget, is the prototype Fishaholic Dark Matter Surf Rod paired with the 250 stall. And for quite some time, I've been wanting to give you guys a close up of the uh, new surf rods coming soon that'll be available at uh, JH Tackle. And uh, I can't wait till they're available so you guys could pick them up and fish them hard in the surf and hopefully catch some nice fish on them. And you know, since the surf season really is just getting started. Uh, you know, you're just seeing this rod for the first time, and I can't wait till we really get some big ones on them. And hopefully today, who knows, maybe we can get some fish into the upper teens or low 20 pound class. You know, you never know. Like the spring can be funny like that. You can get on a little schooly bite, and then out of nowhere, a rogue, you know, 20 pounder could just cruise in and nail the diamond jig. There's one. That was really close in, too. <laughs> Decent schoolie.
And that's what I love about this spot is, you know, you really don't have to cast far and to, you know, or cover a lot of water to catch fish. You know, I probably could have a light little spinning rod and just be casting right in this white water right in front of us and still be able to catch fish in this area. You know, these fish are not afraid to be in two or three feet of water, but it does help, of course, to, you know, cover more water because obviously then you put it in front of more fish. So that's why you want more distance typically when you're surf fishing. Hmm. All right, well, we took about like two, three dozen more casts of the diamond, nothing. So let's uh, maybe try a little one and a quarter ounce white bucktail. All this white water is just telling me to throw a little bucky and um, tipping it with just a fat cow jig strip because that's what I had on there. And when I'm making casts with a bucktail, I really like to time all my casts. So I wait for the furthest wave out that I know I could cast over to break. And it doesn't have to be a big break. It just has to be enough of a break to create some white water. And that's what I look for, to fish that white water right behind the wave. Because I, I look at stripers in this kind of surf like surfers you know they like to surf the white water or surf right behind the wave and look for any disoriented bait fish after that wave breaks and you know churns up the water and then they just have a field day and try and eat whatever is caught in that uh, turbulent water uh, switching to the shad no bites on the bucky this has got to find at least one more here there's one right there. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's a powerful rod. You load it up a little bit, it made this little guy fly out of the water. It'll really be great for tossing real heavy plugs. And look how fat this little guy is. All right, well, we found one more. Nothing too crazy. I think we're uh, gonna make a move. All right, we're gonna get out relatively far, probably on that big flat rock that wave just hit. All right, this should be good. We'll start with the shad since we ended with the shad at the first spot. Let's take a couple dozen casts with this, see what we catch. Then maybe try the diamond jig again. We'll be able to cover a lot more water with that. Oh, we saw a couple turns out there diving on some bait. And, and uh, I'm seeing quite a few cormorants. That's a good sign. You know, where there's birds that are feeding on the bait, that's you know, gonna be a good indication that hopefully some stripers will be feeding on the same bait. Probably about our fifth cast right in front of this big rock. I was actually gonna get on that rock too. I'm glad I didn't because we popped this guy right off it. You know, the schoolies are of a slightly larger class compared to the first time we were out here or in our last surf video. All right, let's see if we can pop another one right off this rock in front of us. If there was one there, it was probably more. Oh, there's another one. That was easy. <laughs> That's a much better one. Probably looking at 27, 27 and a half maybe. Nice. 
All right, well, we took the shad off and switched to the diamond jig. Took a couple dozen casts with this. No bites. And I'm not in love with the water clarity here and as well as the high concentration of weeds. So we're gonna keep moving east. All right, well, we're on our way to spot number three. And uh, I just wanted to talk about the tides on our way there. And we're probably about halfway there and I'm already starting to break a sweat because of all this gear we've got on. But uh, I'm noticing the water is also getting a lot cleaner as we're moving further east. And uh, the reason I'm moving further east, like even though that second spot had a lot of weeds and you know, the water was a little murkier, a lot murkier actually than the first spot and a lot weedier, uh, even if we got on a bite there, eventually that bite probably would have died and I would have ended up moving anyway. And that is because we're fishing this incoming tide and the further east you move, the later high tide is gonna be. So this last spot or maybe second to last spot that we're gonna hit, high tide is probably gonna be an hour and a half or two hours later actually than our first spot. So that's how you fish the tide along here in hopes that um, you know eventually you hit the right spot with uh, the right conditions in a, in a multitude of different factors, you know, like water clarity, weeds and structure and uh, eventually put the plug or present the plug in uh, the correct way to put it in front of the right fish to get the right bite. So I can just about see the rock that I want to get on at our third spot. And uh, yeah, I'm loving the like clearish green colored water that I'm seeing here. And I, I'm looking in the waves constantly to see if I see bait or fish and also to see if I notice any weeds and I don't. So that's a good thing. So, well, I don't see the weeds. <laughs> if we saw the fish in the bait, that would definitely be a good thing but yeah we're almost there let's get uh, out on the rock all right let's see if anybody's home here matt just came out and found me too so got some company there's one took about five casts to find this guy Hmm, nothing crazy kind of what we've been catching. Oh, bigger fish. Did I lose them? I just lost them. Dang. That that felt like a bigger fish. <laughs> oh, dang it, man. What happened there is he hit, and then he turned and swam with the wave as that wave was breaking. And uh, there's a little slack in the line. He popped right off. It's like a little white water edge right there. That's where we just had both those bites. There's one. It might be a slot here. Come on, be a slot. Uh, close to it. <laughs> Under, you know, maybe 27. Or, uh, he's 26. <laughs> you pulled hard, buddy, in the beginning. <laughs> All right, well, Fishaholics. So after uh, catching a few at that last spot, uh, I probably had like three or four maybe. Matt had about the same. You know, nothing big, all small. Uh, we started working our way back. We've hit like two or three other spots that I didn't fish on the way out and uh, not a touch. The water has just been really murky and uh, weeds everywhere. But the one plus side is I found a new fender for the Fishaholic rig, so it's not a total failure. But uh, I guess we're gonna hit like one more spot around the same area where I started today, that, that first spot, and uh, then probably call it a day. Uh, so if I end up catching something, I'll show it at the, at the end of the video. If not, then uh, I'll close things out here. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and like always, live the fish, fish to live.